The biggest barrier to longevity for most people is not as simple as it seems. It's a complex discussion. Of course, we could go into all kinds of granular detail. I mean, arguably, one of the biggest risks to us is probably hopping in a car and driving down the road. So don't take this literally, but when you look at what we know based upon molecular science and biochemistry, we do know that certain actions within the body are impeded by insulin. Now, what does this mean? Well, let's go ahead and break it down in some exquisite detail so that you have a playbook and how to apply this into your life. First off, we need to understand that every action has sort of a reaction, right? We exercise because we inflict a little bit of stress on our body and it makes us stronger. We get into a cold plunge because we get a little bit stronger. We get into a sauna because we react and we get a little bit stronger, right? We even restrict calories because when we restrict calories, we have a stress response that makes us stronger. And at the very core of this stress response is a transcription factor. And that transcription factor is called FOXO3. Now, since we've talked about FOXO before, and since I've started talking about it, there's been lots of new literature that's come out. And one of the things that we've really learned is that FOXO3 triggers our body to produce its own antioxidants. So for example, when you exercise, exercise becomes a very toxic thing in the body. And what I mean by that is you create a lot of reactive oxygen species, you create a lot of oxidative stress. If you did not have a way to upregulate antioxidants in the body, then even the stress of exercise would eventually kill you because you have no way to mitigate the oxidative stress, right? Same kind of thing with nutrient deprivation. And there's a study that I've talked about in other videos before that was published in Aging Cell that like paints it clear as day. It's a rodent model, but it's very interesting. Now I've talked about it before, but by mentioning it, it helps sort of the idea of this video get out there. Okay, so in this study, they basically had mice restrict calories and they lived longer. But when they eliminated FOXO3 and the mice reduced calories, they did not live longer, showing that FOXO3 was a huge part of longevity because it allowed for the stress response that made the body stronger as a result of caloric restriction. Now, just so that we can get straight to the point, the biggest inhibitor of FOXO3 is actually insulin. So yeah, when we don't eat, insulin levels are low and FOXO3 is activated. When we eat, insulin is higher, peptide hormone, and yeah, we're not producing FOXO3. So arguably, if we just ate all the time, like, yeah, we wouldn't produce much FOXO3. But the point of this video isn't to tell you to fast. The point of this video isn't tell you to tell you to reduce carbohydrates. It's not even to tell you to really reduce fuel. What I'm trying to tell you is that when our insulin levels are high is when we are stopping one of the most important aspects of longevity. Now, let me talk about a study that was published in Cell Metabolism for a second. Okay, because this study found that if you train to like 80% of your VO2 max, you express PGC1A and you express PPAR alpha. Okay, what does that have to do with this entire video? What that has to do with this video is these are transcription factors that are associated with beta oxidation and with mitochondrial health. Okay. So that means that one of the ways that you overcome this issue is by increasing your body's ability to utilize fats more efficiently. And by improving your mitochondrial health, you can do that. So how does that interplay? What exactly am I getting at? What does exercise have to do with this? Well, hyperinsulinemia, chronically high levels of insulin, as a result of insulin resistance, as a result of diabetes, as a result of poor mitochondrial function, can impact your aging and impact your longevity because they're impeding FOXO3. This is not an issue for someone who eats food, has a periodic insulin spike, and then comes back down. This is for people with high levels of insulin. What is your fasting insulin level? Go to the doctor and ask them to test your fasting insulin level. Are you above a 10? Are you above a 15? You should really be below a 10 realistically because high circulating levels of insulin means that you're always sort of impeding this very important ability to adapt. 
Insulin being chronically elevated without the proper highs and lows could be standing in the way of your longevity. Well, what does exercise have to do with this? Well, in a really weird way, exercise and PGC1A actually protects from FOXO3. Okay, now I've lost you. I thought FOXO3 was good. FOXO3 is good. The problem is too much FOXO3 breaks down muscle. Okay, so what you wanna do is you want to get your body in an efficient state of being able to utilize fats effectively, and that means increasing your cardiorespiratory fitness, okay, doing things for overall mitochondrial health. I also put a link down below for a company called Timeline if you're interested in a supplement that kind of has this impact. So Timeline is interesting because they use something called urolithin A, which improves what's called mitophagy. Mitophagy is like autophagy of the mitochondria. Complicated, but it means that the mitochondria is able to recycle itself and get stronger. And this is based on some pretty solid peer-reviewed literature. They've got studies in JAMA, they've got studies in other journals that back up what urolithin A is. So I put a link down below. Urolithin A is extracted from pomegranates, but not everyone can utilize it when it's consumed in a pomegranate form. So urolithin A and MitoPure is just a unique technology with it. Again, I don't want the net impression of this video to be by this supplement. The net impression of this video is a lifestyle approach that I'm gonna share with you. I just feel like this is an adequate supplement to mention. They're also a great sponsor on this channel and it's an appropriate time to mention them. So that link down below saves you 10% off MitoPure, whether you use their whey protein MitoPure, whether you use their berry powder that you can add to shakes or you use their capsules. But I highly, highly recommend it if longevity is your current focus. So that link is down below in the description. So where this all comes into play is if you can train in that aerobic capacity for 30 to 40 minutes, four days per week, at 80% of our VO2 max. Okay, so basically 80% intensity. Okay, that sounds like a lot, but this is very, very powerful for training your mitochondria to be more efficient. And when that happens, the literature suggests that your chronically high insulin levels will come back down. There was also a study that was published in Helion that took a look at intermittent fasting compared to a control diet compared to prolonged fasting. And it found that intermittent fasting worked better than regular control diet and even worked better than prolonged fasting at increasing FOXO3 and increasing the subsequent antioxidants that come as a result of it. This is all very, very potent when it comes down to longevity. So what are some ways that you can reduce your insulin levels besides exercise and besides fasting? Well, the more that you can lower your glucose levels before bed, you're gonna have less circulating insulin at night. So I would highly recommend that people maybe limit their carbohydrates at night if they are suffering from higher levels of insulin. Otherwise, it's not as big of a deal. Resistance training, adding as much muscle mass as you safely can add. The more muscle sinks that you have, the more you're able to soak up carbohydrates when you do eat them. There was also a study that was published in 2021 in the journal Aging that was very interesting. That took a look at a Mediterranean low carb diet. It looked like this. They had three servings of liver per week, five to 10 free range eggs per week, and then per day, two cups leafy greens, two cups cruciferous vegetables, two cups of low glycemic fruit, a couple of beets, Okay, and then they also added a few supplements. They did things like quercetin, garlic, they added uh, rosemary, turmeric, they also added a probiotic in, okay? And they found that this reversed their epigenetic age by two years. Now, when you're looking at the world of aging and FOXO3, if you're reversing your epigenetic age, you can almost certainly guarantee that the way they were eating was reducing insulin and increasing FOXO3 activation. So this is one of the most wholesome ways that you could live your life. They also made sure that they were getting at least 30 minutes of aerobic exercise five days per week. They were getting about seven hours of sleep and they were focusing overall on antioxidant rich foods. And they were drinking green tea and oolong tea. I know it sounds like a lot to take in, but if I spell it all out for you, the whole goal is to reduce insulin down to a steady level, but not be afraid of insulin. It's not about being afraid of carbohydrates because blood sugar is bad. 
It's about not having insulin circulating so much all the time that you're never allowing adaptations to occur. And that is why I stand behind the fact that insulin might be one of the biggest barriers to the appropriate longevity that we're seeking. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.